Hey, have you heard about Twitter's data breach? Employees' data getting leaked? Have you heard about LastPass data getting breached? Have you heard about Facebook getting hacked? There are so many news that we hear day in and day out in this world and they are so common in recent times. We all know how big is the scope of cybersecurity and it's increasing day by day. Statistics show that over 1 million job openings will be there by the end of 2023 and the fact is less than 50% of individuals are actually skilled to do the job. Less than 50% and even after the advent of AI, it's the same. As digitization increases, more and more people are coming online. More and more businesses are doing their business online, coming up with their assets online. After COVID, there is 600% increase in cyber attacks and I'm not kidding. And there is a big fact check that every 38 seconds, there is a targeted cyber attack happening somewhere in the world. So what is cyber security? Cyber security is an industry where we apply techniques and tools used to protect a computer related system, namely software, hardware or a network from cyber criminals or hackers. And honestly, cyber security as a whole is a very huge field. When people say about, I'm getting a job in cyber security, how to get a job in cyber security? There is no job in cyber security as such. You won't get it. There are many fields, there are many disciplines, many domains inside that. So you need to get a job inside that because there are so many systems, diverse systems that have their own life cycle to secure. For example, you might have heard about different types of softwares, namely web applications, mobile applications, maybe Android or iOS, desktop applications, IoT applications, and many more. For a job in cybersecurity, you can be a destroyer or a protector. You can join both the sides of the coin. For an offensive job, you hack and find bugs. For a defensive job, you identify attacks and stop them. And this is a very high level simplification of a cybersecurity job. Even if you go inside red team and blue team, there are so many different domains like namely AppSec, CloudSec, Forensic Investigator, SOC, IoT, Malware Analyst, Incident Responder and so on. And the most common jobs you might have heard about in cybersecurity are pen tester for offensive jobs, VAPT or red team. And for defensive job, it's SOC, SOC analyst or a DFIR analyst or a blue teamer. And if I go in deep on all the domains will be out of scope for this video. I'm here to give you a general overview of every domain and how to create a career potentially out of that. And I'll give you a roadmap for the exact things that you will do and you should do. I cannot tell you exactly what to do because there is no perfect roadmap for anything. But I'll just give you the bare minimums and my recommendations, what I would suggest you to do. So let's get started. But one problem I want to tell you, that I can tell you what to learn and how to learn it, but you'll need to find the resources to learn because they are very scattered. There is no single course that can teach you everything. So the problem with people is that they'll go there, they'll find resources on Google, they'll learn from scattered resources and the problem will be that they will not have complete knowledge of the same domain in deep. They'll pick up voids between their knowledge, so it will affect their career. But what if someone shows you the exact things to learn and make you industry ready for a domain? I'm going to talk about Simply Learn's industry ready cybersecurity program that will teach you in demand skills in just six months and your career can be started right away. This program is Advanced Executive Program in Cybersecurity by Simply Learn in collaboration with IIIT Bangalore, where you will learn this in-demand skills from their top faculty with real-world scenarios. And here you will learn practical knowledge by solving practical labs with popular tools including Nessus and Verb Suite. After the completion of your course, you will get a completion certificate from IIIT Bangalore and a transcript to validate your learning. Apart from that, you will get a virtual internship from NPCI, National Payments Corporation of India, in which you will get four projects where you will have to solve cybersecurity problems by identifying issues or vulnerabilities in a system and tell how to secure them. Sounds exciting, right? So if you want to be eligible for this program, you need to have a bachelor's degree at least and one year work experience in any relevant security field and some basic knowledge of programming. So if you are interested, the link is in the description. Go to the link, read all the description and all the details. Click on apply now, fill all your details and just enroll right away. In order to learn cybersecurity, you need to first learn some prerequisites. It's not that easy to jump directly into that. So first of all, you need to love computers. You need to fall in love with them. I am serious. So first of all, the very basic skill you need to learn is computer fundamentals. So I.O. input, output, software, hardware, how memory management is done, disk management, memory, uh, process management, Windows and Linux in both the OS. 
and I'm not kidding you need to learn system administration level of courses you can do a plus and then you need to learn virtualization too how to run an OS over OS and multiple OS and you can find all those courses on YouTube you don't have to wander around anywhere and waste your time everything you can get free so the next thing that you need to learn is the most important thing they want to talk about is computer networking that's the most important thing no single computer can be hacked if it's not connected to anything else so there is no isolated system in cyber security so you need to learn how computers are connected the basic tcp ip and osi models and all the layers inside that the most important layers are data link layer till the application layer so the application layer is most important here all the protocols that you will learn http smtp ftp ssh and everything the most common in web is http so you need to be thorough inside that that is indirectly related to internet and internet runs on ip addresses and port numbers so the third and fourth layer are very important for you to understand how network works if you want to be a network pen tester then ip ip layers and ip protocols and ip types the header formats tcp udp port numbers and all the details inside that and I'll repeat again, 90% of hacking is based on network. So you need to learn them. You can learn from books. There is some good book I can recommend, Data Communication and Networking from Forozen that I personally used. But you can watch YouTube videos, you can watch courses. And I'll repeat again, 90% of hacking is based on network. So internet is networking. The third thing is Linux and shell programming. If you don't know, majority of world's servers are based out of Linux because it's robust. Some examples for robust Linux servers are RHEL and CentOS. And even after that, the attacking machine that most of the hackers use in the world is based out of Linux because Linux is open source, Linux is robust, it's customizable. So you know everything about it. And you need to be learning shell programming because even if you don't have any tools with GUIs, you'll need to learn how to use them on command line. It's very important because as a hacker, you might have seen that command line window, a black screen or a green text. So that's very fancy, right? That is what is terminal or a shell. You need to learn that to be cool. Just kidding. Learning Linux is very easy. You can start from a beginner friendly OS like Ubuntu. It's very easy to learn. You can just explore and try things there, learn tools. And then you can switch to a hacker OS called Kali. You might have heard about it, right? Many things. So then you can learn how to use tools because it's made for penetration testers, by pen testers. And there are many tools you can uh, you can master, you can learn the techniques of hacking. And it will be very cool. But first, you need to make sure that you're doing things right and ethically. And by shell programming in Linux, I mean bash. That's the current standard of shell being used. So there are a lot of commands, many simple commands. Once you keep typing, you'll remember in your subconscious mind, ls, cd, pwd, uh, cp. All of these commands will be used in your daily basis. And the next thing is programming. <laughs> Do we need to learn programming? Many people ask me this question. Is there a need? I don't know how to code. I'm very weak in that. But I'll tell you, if you opt for an offensive job in a pen testing world, you need to learn how to program and how code is written because in a corporate world, there is white box pen testing. You get access to the source code. So you have to extensively review the source code and then find issues in that. So there is no way out. Eventually you'll need to learn it. But at the starting for a beginner, I won't say it's a big deal or a big headache to uh, conquer, but you can keep it on hold for some time. Just familiarize yourself with cybersecurity concept. And once you feel you're ready to learn programming on the side, along the way, then you can just start it because eventually you'll need to learn it at the end. So why not start early? So it's a very simple concept, right? How a software is made. What is it made of? Code, right? So if you need to hack a software, you need to learn how it is coded, how it is written. So you need to learn to read code. So you need to learn many basic concepts of programming like data types, variables, uh, conditionals, loops, classes and objects. And these are enough. So these are the major concepts that you need to learn in basic programming. And you can pick up any programming language that you can master but you don't know which programming language will come before you to hack or test. It can be anything. So you have to learn the basic concept. The syntax are different in all the languages, but the basic concept is same. So these are the prerequisites that I will recommend you to learn at the bare minimum. And these are very crucial. So once you get through all of them and do brainstorming and keep everything in mind and you've learned everything, then you can start go learn cyber security from various sources because they're very scattered. And even then there is no single course of cyber security. There are many domains, many disciplines, 
and each of them have different things to learn and topics. And even here I have a bare minimum concept to learn for you all is the OWASP Top 10. So what is OWASP? OWASP is a foundation of web security that is developed and designed for web developers and security researchers to make them aware about cyber attacks and how they can secure themselves. And every three or four years, they will release an extensive list of top 10 vulnerabilities or attacks that is the result of consensus of all the issues and attacks reported recently through statistics. And they have extensive resource factory for all of them, including labs and tools, and they are all free. So if you see the list, you will see some examples like access control, security misconfiguration, secure design, SSRF, I'm not gonna take all the names. But for each attack type, they have their own descriptive documentation. They'll make you understand as a hacker and also as a developer, how you can see, how we can identify the issue in your code and how you can fix them optimally. And even for all the issues, there are labs that you can solve to practice them and realize them in real world. They have many labs, including OWASP Juice Shop, BWAP. You can just set up them on your local machine or just run a cloud instance and then just practice them. And even they conduct conferences by the name of OWASP. They also have their YouTube pages. You can learn from them. And they have a lot, lot of documentation. They have a tool, OWASP Zap, for pen testing just like Verb Suite. So they have very good resources. And I'll tell you one thing, that practice is the key. If you learn a concept today, don't just leave it like that. The theory won't help you in getting a job. You need to practice the concept. Each and every attack, issue, framework, vulnerability, you need to practice them on your own hands-on with your own labs. So I'll tell you that you know already that how technology changes drastically every day. So you need to get updated and be proactive in learning new things. This is a complete practical field, okay? And then there's another resource just like OWASP. There is another resource called Portsvigger. They have their own labs called Web Security Academy where you can learn all the concepts of web security and solve the labs online which are free. And also they have a tool called Burp Suite that's the most popular tool that every hacker uses when they want to pen test something. So even I use that, even you will use that, everyone uses that. And every cyber attack has an impact and a risk involved in that. And there is a huge difference between risk and impact. That's where our risk and compliance teams come into place. The risk management, there is a different job profile called GRC or governance risk and compliance with many other names, but the concept is the same that you find an issue, but how to fix that and how to fix the risk. The risk is associated to the business. The risk and compliance team will relate every risk to the business impact or objective. So the basic goal of cybersecurity is to identify and realize your risk and then to contain it and reduce this as much as possible. That's where hacker come in to realize those risks. And if I talk about defensive jobs, their job is to learn digital forensics and incidents. So they need to learn how to do incident management, how to review the logs, how to use SIEM tools, and how to correlate data. So they'll have to find evidences of all the attacks that recently happened and continuously monitor the network events and create alerts so that they can respond to them. So they have to do a lot of investigation, correlation and root cause analysis of the issue. Once they find the root or the culprit, they'll try to reduce the risk and prevent that from happening in the future. So likewise, we have many domains and each domain has its own deep knowledge that you cannot gain, that's not possible. You need to select a domain of your choice. You can only get by research, by self-study. No college can teach you that. But I'll tell you one more problem. I told you everything that you need to learn you learn everything, you gain all the skills, you do a lot of practice that you know, that you know everything that you can do and perform those attacks. But how will you tell the HR? How will the HR know? So it's not just about acquiring skills, it's also about proving your skills. That's what happens when you look for a job, when you hunt a job and look for a good career. The first thing is to build your resume professionally. That's the shortlisting criteria. You won't even get to the interviews if you don't take this seriously. So I'll tell you what are things you'll need to add in your resume. So the first thing is degree. Unfortunately, you need to do a degree in CS or IT branch because most companies want that. And my preference for a degree is BTEC, then BCA, and then BSc. But if you are a maths student, the BTEC is the best option. If you are an art student, then you don't have any choice. You can do BCA or BSc. If you are from any other branch like electrical, mechanical, civil, you haven't done bachelor's in CS or IT, then you can go for master's. You should go for master's. 
but i won't say it's very hard requirement or a very necessary thing to do i didn't do masters myself but if you want you can do that it will be a good option for a job if you are getting good placements in that college but i'll tell you that the degree is the only thing that we require we don't care about anything else and how you do it we just need that certificate so you can do private programs distance learning anything doesn't matter the second thing is projects they are very important as a fresher especially because you don't have any work experience so you need to do something apart from your learning so whatever you learned whatever skills you gained you should apply them somewhere to prove it like that's the point so you can apply your cyber security skills with any other domain like ai uh, cloud security blockchain web3 include anything combine them and create a good project with many project ideas that i can give you and then you need to open source that because you need to show the employer because they will demand and require your link that they can verify themselves because there are many false alarms out there and i've already told you how you can do projects in cyber security the simply learn internship from mpci from that advanced executive program will give you four projects that's all you need that's all you need to put so you can put that link in your resume along with your linkedin that's equally important and the next thing is certifications and i'll tell you that if you do a certification then you don't need to do a masters degree at all it's not required do some good certifications because they teach you a skill in a particular niche in deep in a shorter time so it won't take you 2 years it will just take you 1 month 2 months 3 months or maximum 6 months if you are good enough and there are many certifications right now in the market that you can choose but for india for an hr i think ceh is the most basic certification that they look because they all know that but skill wise ceh is not good it's just a theory examination for practical skills for actual skill development you should give oscp because hr loves it and also you'll get a better job with a better salary in a better company with oscp because it's more skillful and more better than ceh holder and also the problem is with oscp is the price that's why not many people take it it's more costly but if you want to be cheaper and gain some practical skills too you can do e learn certifications like ejpt eccpt or eccpt you can correct me ewaptx those are very practical and very good certifications not on the level of oscp very close to them but still they are cheaper so it's a good deal there are more certifications that are more relevant in outside countries like security plus pentest plus crtp so that you can do that if you want to plan for some foreign countries or foreign jobs so likewise two three certifications are more than enough and now comes work experience the internship i've already told you how to get an internship just go to the simply learns program and you will get it just enroll there so that's not a problem for you but if you want extra internships you'll go to the linkedin create an account today you'll need to be actively involved in linkedin and don't use any other social media more than linkedin because it's going to help you in your job search the most so connect with people do an internship at least 3 months or maybe 6 months it will gain you a good experience on how work is done in an industry and then even that company itself can give you a job offer called ppo and you can join with a good package or a salary so now your resume is strong enough you can actively look for jobs and that too it will be the same in linkedin so you need to build as much connections as possible with good people working in a good company in your desired cyber security domain connect with hrs and approach them talk to them personally share your resume be professional be polite be kind and make sure that you reveal a sense of passion inside you and building a good network in linkedin helps a lot you will get a lot of referrals if possible if you don't know what referral is is you can just get into a company with the trust of another person that's already working in that company and getting a referral makes your job hunt much easier you land a job much easier because you'll get interviews and even if you make some mistakes in your interviews it will be a trust factor they will be tolerable and they'll select you and for a job hunt i have seen people talking to me coming back saying that they are not getting a job they have tried hard enough but when i ask them how many companies you have applied on they say only 5 or 10 that doesn't make sense you need to apply at least 50 to 100 companies because the average reward rate is 10% so if you apply in 50 companies you will get to apply from 5 of them so that's the rate and keep that in mind try hard as you can So when your resume is shortlisted you'll have 3 to 4 technical rounds with a managerial round these are the average figures and if you are applying for an offensive job like a pen tester you'll get you'll expect OASP top 10 in code review questions definitely 
and scenario based questions are very common in good companies today because they'll have to test you on a hypothetical situation how you handle the situation what is the decision making approach and how you solve the problems in very stressful environment how you can work under stress and don't even lose your composure and calm in those situations so the technical skills are not enough you need to have some soft skills like communication skills listening skills decision making skills and always have a growth mindset i'll tell you one simple key to getting a job in cybersecurity is to understand the risk of your assets and learn how to contain them and adapt to the ever evolving and changing threat landscape cybersecurity is an ever evolving field its scope is not going to get declined anytime soon it will just keep improving so the only problem with people is that they don't learn consistently so you need to learn consistently and be aware of all the technological updates around you and you should be good so all the best for your next cyber security job that's all i got for today and don't forget to enroll into advanced executive program that's the flagship course that will make you industry ready in cyber security along with an internship so that's all for today thank you for watching